Good afternoon, everyone. I am April E. Bell, and I'm pleased to present my research today. I'd like to thank the NDMU PhD committee and my dissertation committee, Dr. Durham, Dr. Fenster, and Dr. Brandon. I would also like to acknowledge Sister Sleer and my family member, Ms. Lynn Anderson, for joining. The title of my dissertation is Destination FAFSA, High School Student, Family, and School Factors That Matter for Planning for and Completing the Free Application for Federal Student Aid. I chose this topic of financial aid in a FAFSA because during my years in the education sector, I found that so many students missed the opportunity to attend college simply because they didn't understand or participate in the financial aid application process. And as a doctoral student, I wanted to research why. College and career readiness encompasses several dimensions. Among these, college financial knowledge, which includes the familiarity with sources and types of college financial aid, and how to access them. The free application for federal student aid is the official form that students use to obtain student aid. The FAFSA is required to access four main types of aid. That's grants, scholarships, loans, and work study. The FAFSA is crucial. It's the gateway to student financial aid. However, Mass amounts of funding go untouched. They're untapped. According to NCAN, the National High School Class of 2022 failed to claim over $3.5 billion in federal Pell Grants because they did not complete the FAFSA. So what's the rationale of my research study? First, scholars agreed that the complexity of the financial aid process specifically the FAFSA, is a major barrier to students' college access and success. Second, research has identified factors related to college access, such as socioeconomic status of the family, student aspirations, college financial knowledge, and student support systems. Yet very little research is explicitly studied the key predictors of students' FAFSA planning and completion. There were three purposes of my study. The first was to investigate the rela relationships between high school students' characteristics and plans to complete the FAFSA. The second was to identify the most common reasons students say why they are not planning to complete the FAFSA. And third was to examine how family and school supports mediated the relationships between student characteristics and plans to complete the FAFSA. I separately wanted to know and consider these relationships for students who said they were not planning to complete the FAFSA earlier in high school. In the literature, I found four factors that appear to be potential barriers to students' FAFSA completion. First, students' lack of college aspirations. The second barrier is incorrect information about college costs and the purpose of the FAFSA. Researchers have found that students and parents often cannot accurately estimate the cost of college. Also, students and families may be unaware of what the FAFSA is for. There's evidence that some families believe that the FAFSA is a student loan application. Third, students and parents may avoid the FAFSA because of debt aversion. Debt aversion may hinder students from applying for any type of financial aid because they are hesitant to take on student loan debt. Finally, researchers agree that completing the FAFSA is difficult and cumbersome, especially for those with weak financial literacy to start with. Completing the FAFSA means tracking down and understanding information about family income, assets, income assistance, and many other arcane things. This can be overwhelming. There's also evidence that the complexity of the student aid system, particularly the FAFSA, poses barriers to low income students. These students are more likely to have unusual financial and household circumstances that making the completing of the FAFSA 
really not straightforward. So according to Bardu, economic capital is the root of all, fine, all forms of capital, which includes social and cultural capital. Cultural capital entails the intangible skills, knowledge, and traits one holds based on one's socioeconomic status and gains access through social capital. Now, social capital is the combination of one's actual or potential resources inherent within relationships and mutual acquaintances. Social and cultural capital theories help illustrate how knowledge, skills, actions, and attitudes relate to FAFSA completion, depending on a student's family and school social supports, and how knowledge within these networks can support FAFSA completion, such as building confidence, networking, using people as resources, and navigating complex systems and application processes. My research questions are, what demographic, family, and school supports predict 11th grade students having plans to complete the FAFSA? Second, what reasons do students provide for not planning to complete the FAFSA? Third, to what extent do each variable, student, family, and school supports predict FAFSA completion by the fall after high school graduation? And fourth, are different sources of support more salient for students who initially do not plan to complete the FAFSA. My conceptual framework illustrates the proposed relationships among the constructs, the key constructs, including student and parent demographics, family and school supports, FAFSA plans, and completion. My data source was the HSLS-09, a nationally representative longitudinal data source of over 21,000 eligible ninth grade students in the fall of 2009, sampled from 944 schools. Relevant to my study is the base year wave of 2009 when the cohort was in the ninth grade, the first year follow-up in 2012 when on-time students were in the 11th grade, the update in 2013 providing data on post-secondary outcomes such as FAFSA completion, socioeconomic and family characteristics, behaviors, household factors, and college planning were collected from each student's parents, and data were collected from the student's school administrators and counselors. My study used a quantitative correlation design entailing analysis exploring relationships between constructs. For research questions one, three, and three A, I used a multivariate logistic regression to predict whether students planned to complete and later actually completed the FAFSA. I also predicted FAFSA completion for students who initially had no plans to do so. To answer my second question, Descriptive analysis measured the most frequent reasons students gave for not completing the FAFSA. I looked at two primary outcomes, having plans to complete the FAFSA and actual completion on time for college enrollment. Key independent variables included student, family, and school characteristics. Independent composite variables and measures are family supports, with variables such as parents' financial prep for paying for college and the parent financial aid related actions and activities. For school supports, variables include whether the school offered FAFSA completion initiatives and the parent engagement levels reported by the school administrator. So now time for the results. Research question number one. What demographic family and school supports predict high school students having plans to complete the FAFSA in 11th grade? The analysis took a stepwise approach. The results I'm sharing today are from the full model, but for clear presentation, I will present the results of the final model in three sets. First will be family demographics, then family activities, and then Finally, school supports. But note that all of these estimates are the net effects. First, let's look at demographic predictors. 
males have relatively lower odds of planning to complete the FAFSA than females. And in comparison to white students, Hispanic students had approximately 21% lower odds. No other groups were significantly different. First gen students had about 23% lower odds of planning to complete the FAFSA than students whose parents have a college degree. And regarding income, as family income increased by about $20,000, the odds of a student planning to complete the FAFSA decreased by 12%. Neither school sector nor urban locale were significant. Now for family supports, estimates show that only one variable was statistically significant. Each additional step the parent took to gather financial information associated with 72% higher odds. However, no significant relationships between plans to complete the FAFSA and family members' influence on students' post-secondary education or specific financial prep steps. Likewise, concerning sources of school supports, only one predictor was significantly related in the full model. Having friends who plan to attend a two or four year college after high school associated with approximately, let's see, 22% higher odds. However, the schools that make college readiness a priority, offering FAFSA and other financial aid supports, and students having school based adult influence their post-secondary plans were significantly related, were not significantly related to planning to complete the FAFSA. Now, research question number two, what reasons do students supply for not planning to complete the FAFSA in 11th grade? Now, this analysis uncovered some very interesting results. When students reported no plans to complete the FAFSA, a follow-up question asked students, to provide reasons why they had no plan. These reasons aligned with my four potential barriers to FAFSA completion that I found in the literature. The most common reason is that they could afford to pay for college without financial aid. This finding is compelling because it relates to students having incorrect information about college costs and tending to underestimate them. And it may also point to the lack of understanding about the many types of financial aid available by completing the FAFSA. Slightly lower, 42%, the second most common reason is that students thought that they might not qualify for financial aid. In the literature, I found that in addition to underestimating college costs, students were unaware of what the FAFSA was for, such as student and parent loans, and scholarships. The third and fourth most common reasons were not wanting to take on debt and not knowing how to apply for financial aid. The fifth most common reason provided by students is that they had no plans to continue education after high school. And the least common reason selected by students is that they thought the application was too difficult. Now, this last finding was surprising because in the literature, researchers argued that FAFSA difficulty was one of the main reasons students don't complete the FAFSA. Now, for research question number three, in what, to what extent does each set of variables, student, family, and school supports predict FAFSA completion by the fall of high school graduation? Concerning demographics, male students had significantly lower odds of completing the FAFSA than females. No significant differences remain between white and other racial groups with family and school supports controlled. The odds of first-generation students completing the FAFSA is about 40%, excuse me, lower than first non-first-gen uh, students. Family income was significant and negatively related to FAFSA completion, and both public school designation and urban school setting remain non-significant. 
for family supports, the relationship between FAFSA completion and a family steps to gather financial aid information was a strong predictor with parents' actions and activities. These variables were associated with 20 and 27% higher odds of completion, respectively. Concerning sources of school support, schools that make college readiness a priority was not significant, nor was providing FAFSA and non-FAFSA specific financial aid resources and supports. Students having a school-based influencer was not significant, and higher levels of parent school engagement was not significant. However, the odds of completing the FAFSA was 36% higher when a student had friends who planned to go to college. Now, finally, research question 3A. Are different resources of support more salient for students who initially do not plan to complete the FAFSA? For this question, I found that neither gender nor race were significantly related to FAFSA completion. And similar to the full sample, first-gen students had lower odds of FAFSA completion and family income, it was still significant, and public school designation and urban locale remained non-significant. There were no significant differences in the results for family supports. Each additional college readiness activity a parent or student undertakes is associated with 22.5% higher odds of FAFSA completion. Likewise, there were no differences in the results for school supports. Students with friends who plan to go to college is the most impactful school-based factor for FAFSA completion among those who, in the 11th grade, did not plan to complete the FAFSA. So, conclusions. Concerning predictors of plans to complete the FAFSA, males, Hispanic, first-gen students, and families with more income are at risk for not having concrete plans to complete the FAFSA at a critical point in high school. Regarding reasons for not planning to complete the FAFSA, the most common reason was assuming that they could afford college without assistance. The least likely reason was FAFSA complexity. This calls into question the recent simplified FAFSA revamp and whether it will increase FAFSA completion in the long run. For predictors of FAFSA completion, positive family sources of support for FAFSA completion includes gathering financial aid information from family, friends, and financial aid offices. Predictors of FAFSA completion for students with initial, no initial plans in the 11th grade. For those students lacking plans were nearly identical to those with plans. My findings have implications for district and school-based approaches for building and sustaining a college-going culture. Schools and districts need to encourage the development of a college-going culture, which includes professional de development for administrators, school counselors, and teachers, all focusing on integrating college knowledge into middle and high school coursework. For example, financial aid-related topics can be integrated in math and English classes where students can learn about college costs and college knowledge. States and, states and districts should allocate funding to support college readiness programming and outreach efforts. And schools can create opportunities for students and families to engage together to learn and share information, resources, and tools related to the FAFSA. As any investigation, my study is not without limitations. The first limitation is that the findings are correlational, so I cannot draw any causal conclusions. And second, is the school characteristics are endogenous to family characteristics, meaning that there are recursive relationships between school characteristics, such as college-ready resources and family characteristics like SES. So I could not completely isolate the unique associations between each and outcome variables. The third limitation is potential bias in self-reported responses. Self-reported surveys contain biases such as recall, 
response set, social desirability, and cultural biases. The findings provide a roadmap for future research to build and expand on the insights generated in my study. One recommendation for future quantitative research is to study the correlation between the identified predictors of FAFSA completion and financial aid outcomes for the subset of the ninth graders in HSLS 09 for post-secondary institutions following high school graduation. The key to such an investigation would be understanding how the predictors of FAFSA completion also predict college persistence. Another recommendation is for future mixed methods investigation of whether the better FAFSA, the newly launched streamlined financial aid application actually improves FAFSA completion rates. Also needed is qualitative data regarding student and parent experiences in completing the FAFSA. FAFSA completion is much more than filling out the application form for financial aid. It is the gateway. The path to students' equitable access to a college education is paved through college financial knowledge, diligent FAFSA planning, and FAFSA completion. Thank you for this opportunity to present and defend my dissertation. I welcome any questions.